to the 10th the 10th episode of the pure joy podcast uh this is a bi-weekly exploration into what brings people joy every week we have on a new guest and we sort of and we ask them what brings them joy and then we kind of pick that apart and and dive on into it and this episode is no different although it is exciting that it is the 10th episode just exciting number 10 baby let's go um i am excited to introduce my guest for the day his name is brian barons he is a friend of mine uh long time now since the days of uh, of college uh this is wrong good lord let me get this together since the days of We're so close. There we go. Turn it on the camera so we can see. Yay. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Good. How are you, man? Doing good. Doing good. Um, Yeah, it's exciting to have you on. We're here finally. Number 10. Yay. Number 10. Number 10. Very excited um, to have you on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you introduce yourself a little bit to to us here on on the podcast and and the stream, uh, a little bit about who you are and uh, who we're interviewing today. Sure. Um, Like you've already mentioned, my name's Brian. It's nice to meet everybody. Um, Who I am as a person, that's... uh, I'm... (laughs) (laughs) Immediately deeper than you thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I've I've been around since the early 90s. but you know i don't know if that counts as like a 90s kid i feel like 80s kids were more people born in the 80s were more 90s kids but right, I you did, experienced the 90s right like I, I i experienced the tail end of the 90s pretty well like cognitive thought and all that mm-hmm. and i was like a saturday morning cartoon kind of kid um and that you know i feel like that early on kind of formed what i wanted to do in the future which was i don't know if you can see like the title but acting like that's that's my joy that's that's the passion um even if you know you're not necessarily the best at it uh just being able to enjoy it for what it is do it and then also find different forms where that takes place it's just a lot of fun yeah 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 absolutely it's it's great that you were able to sort of find the roots of that so early um Mm -hmm. well before we dive into that we like to start each of these episodes off with uh a small joy something that you has brought you joy just today just today well we were talking about this earlier but i uh i made uh biscuits with sausage and gravy today Mm. um I don't find i find that i'm a little lazy when it comes to you know cooking for myself Mm -hmm. but today you know, it didn't have to work. So uh, I basically just went to the store specifically for biscuits and gravy with sausage uh, ingredients, went home, made some with a very good friend of mine. Um, we basically had a like a FaceTime chat. I didn't I didn't mention this, but we had a FaceTime chat where we were both making them simultaneously. Oh, and then we nice. just both sat down and talked and ate together. Yeah, yes. it was really nice. That's a vibe. Did you guys use the same recipe? Yeah, it was it was same recipe, same methods, uh, slightly different ingredients. Like I used I used almond milk and uh, some really big fluffy biscuits. While hers was like, it, it was the biscuits were a little flatter, but she also used regular milk and some really nice sausage. So yeah, it was yeah. both of them turned out very nice. No, that's so that's that's exciting. That's like a, a very fun like hangout time if you're not like actually hanging out it still works in the same way um Mm -hmm. very fun very fun i like when you get to go to the grocery store with just that one dish in mind like generally i go for groceries right and i'm like okay what are all the things that i could use this for so i'll you know get a whole cart going and then it's just a grocery trip but i like when i go to the grocery store i'm like i am making this thing i'm gonna walk out with a bag or two maybe (laughs) extra candy and a little soda but like it will be this these ingredients and i'm gonna think about that the whole whole way home very exciting yeah 
our last episode like, was him. cooking so like this is very like right on r- right on recent brand uh i've been very thinking about like the way i've been cooking all week i've been actually doing it bringing myself to like cook because i got excited last episode so this is very fun um i think i had yeah. whenever whenever you had told me that i had brought up that there's this other there's this new like it's called waffles and uh, i think waffles and more mm-hmm. I, i'm not 100 percent sure but it is like they have five things on their menu and it is like chicken it is biscuits and gravy and then like waffles and the iterations of that you know like chicken sandwiches chicken and waffles etc but like it's just a wild very specific restaurant that knocks it out of the park uh and we ate there a little bit ago my joy for the day i would say is that like i've been making some like real progress in getting things switched over for long form content and like feeling successful about that the partial switch oh to 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 youtube has been like nice and fluid and like it's making sense with the content and i'm just like feeling very positively about that as time goes on so it's just been good thoughts on that today very nice Uh, onto our topic what in life brings you pure joy what in life brings me pure joy um well besides besides acting uh getting to have these lazy sundays or any days really um where you get to sit down with a specific thing that you want to get done and then do it whether that's like you know even if it's as you know not so great or mundane as chores or something childish like you got a lego set and you're like i want today to make that lego set it's it's a, it's really nice to be able to do specifically what you want on a day get that done go to bed feeling proud of yourself and then you know go through the rest of your week and then come back to that day again hopefully yeah yeah i very much enjoy when i get i i don't particularly have the the like monday through friday work week anymore so my weekends i feel like are kind of non-existent for me but i get those days off and my like quote unquote lazy sundays do come around and i'm always like very excited when you wake up and this is like nice in the morning you get to enjoy your coffee slowly you don't have to like do x y and z while you're waking up always uh, a great day however that question was sort of geared towards the acting thing, the the topic right. at hand, the like what what in you know uh, 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 yeah our topic what in life uh, brings you for joy and you've mentioned acting, talk mm-hmm. to us a little bit about that. Right, so I guess I guess I could have transitioned it better where it's like the lazy days, like harkening back to the '90s of growing up and watching these cartoons. It, there's there's an element to the perf- to like the actual production that you know is one of the things that stands out besides the animation or, you know, the, the budget in with regards to how the scenes play out, but like the mm. acting, like whether it's animated, you still have voice acting, whether you're going to a very nice theater and watching some live productions of either classics or uh, like, for example, Hades town is, is going on, is on tour right now. That's a newer production and it's really nice take on a uh, Greek myth. Um, and then, with you know your hollywood movies like you you go and see dicaprio you go and see uh you know uh jamie lee curtis um i don't know i'm blanking on like no sure sure different actors and actresses and stuff but you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of talk going on like chris for example chris pine i poor chris pine keeps getting brought up but yeah that's a name that comes to mind um (laughs) With you all made a, of you that. made a really good connection there that I like didn't I, I I guess I didn't bite at the thread of and that was that you were like hearkening it back to this lacy Sunday these like starting where this all started for you right the the cartoons on on like Sunday morning Saturday morning cartoons um, has this always been like since that time uh, a thought like in your head something like you've been pushing towards so I think that as a as a kid or even like right now thinking back on it uh i also didn't bite at that threat uh when i was a kid like it was more just i really in- enjoyed this but i don't know all the specific reasons of why mm. um and then as you get older like for example trying out for a play in middle school 
uh, then, you know, trying to get involved in the high school productions as well, especially getting involved in college theater, which is where I, like, I really jumped in and, you know, we got to hang out. But yeah, there was, like, there, there were always little signs or little bits happening because it is, it does surround you, but you, sometimes it takes a little bit of, uh, diving deeper into that to realize like oh even since here i've always enjoyed uh listening to people perform or in the case of a lot of cartoons overperform there's there's a joy to watching people just you know just completely lose it in terms of one emotion or another mm -hmm. uh you know just like whether it's for humor or for drama like even even the overacting is appreciated so yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's a lot easier played off in in particularly like voice acting than it is in acting. I mean, in voice acting, it, you you need to add at least, you know, 20 percent to what you would do if you were live, I feel, because you're do you're it's bigger. It, it, it just is bigger because you have to embody what is happening on screen with more energy than you would need to if that were were you. like started this like really kind of kicked off for you in college mm -hmm. was it was it something you were kind of chasing beforehand and then so got, i don't know uh, got lucky almost that, that that you also enjoyed it in college <laughs> yeah well so it's funny like it, it was always acting was always something that i enjoyed but it was never really something that i pushed for i think there were a few points where like with middle school for example uh, I did James and the Giant Peach and I got to play James and it was amazing. It was like the first thing I tried out for. And then I didn't get, I, I think I took that as like, wow, I'm already here, you know, and then tried out for like sure. further performances. Didn't quite reach that quote unquote stardom of, you know, being like major players in these middle school productions. I wasn't but... James. Yeah, I wasn't James all three times. What, what they did? didn't let me be the uh, peach no matter how much I asked. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so like it, the, that was an element of it was it was a little bit discouraging uh, in terms of wanting to pursue this. But it was also just like I didn't put any, you know, real effort and training in between shows to get better. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, why would I get to be major parts? And also like they might they would depend on the production like somebody else was going to be this and do better do a better job and i didn't really understand that yet so i think through middle school and high school it was a bit of like eh. and then the beginning of college uh i'll let you know i i started as a history major uh my first year just because i liked history yeah uh through middle school and high school and then i switched from history the very next semester to business because i was like uh, you know, business too. it doesn't matter. Right. It was like, let's not, let's not worry about specifics here. Let's just do the, the general degree that'll get me the most job offers when I get out of college, because mm -hmm. like, whatever it's, you know, college will be fun, but you know, like get a degree that people will look at and be like, ah, yes. Hire that person. Maybe. Um, compared and then... <laughs> to a theater degree, my mom says is not, uh, helpful. Yeah. Right. And then I failed out. So that was obviously not the right path. Um, but like failing out was a, uh, a bit of a blessing because like I, and I get that like a lot of, a, a lot of things have been very nice for me in terms of uh, growing up and learning. Like I got to, I got to make these mistakes because of uh, my family and I'm really uh, appreciative of them. You know, after failing out, it was like, okay, let's figure this out and i got to uh i got to fly to spain and do this pilgrimage called the camino de santiago oh. which was a a 500 mile walk across like the entirety of spain from the french spanish border all the way to like the the northwestern border of that where i believe it's saint paul's resting place it's one of the saints but so you walked where... 500 miles yeah, and I would walk 500 more. I would walk 500 more, but not another one. <laughs> yeah. Just, I would fall down at someone's door, for sure. But yeah, it was it was a really nice 
just you know you're walking like 20 plus kilometers a day mm -hmm. i did i did mine in like 50 days mm. um and you get to just think you get to so for some people this would be horrible but for me it was just really nice kind of like i have a thing that i'm going to get done which was walking the set distance from uh hostel to hostel or albergue as they called them for for this trip and during the course of each day there was like you could focus on what you're doing but eventually it's like okay well it's just walking you know some some of this is just a flat road what are you going to do and so you get to think like and for what kept me going for all of that wasn't you know thinking about like what desk job am i going to get in the future like what is going to make me a lot of money what is going to get me you know through my older years and help me you know either start a family or have a really good retirement or anything like that it was all entertainment it was all arts it was music with my friend back home he's a guitarist and i play drums we have made like very small little like songs together that but they were always fun they were always a joy to make and then there was acting there was there was the the desire to create characters from nothing really and then just you give them life by giving them a voice they have some kind of accent they have some kind of uh drive they have you know something from their foundations that makes them who they are and you if it's your character you get to do whatever you want with that and then after the camino i got to go home and go to community college for a semester uh try to get good grades there work at the same time people in like the mcdonald's drive through were like i like your voice and i'm like the voice okay and so like did good had good grades in community college made it back into truman the very next semester and was like communication major but i'm also signing up for theater classes so it was you know it was a complete shift to i want to be some i want to do something with the voice whether that's like radio you can have you can still have a personality there um as long as you're you know being nice and then or i guess for some people you don't have to be you nice you don't even have like, to be nice you know, that's true yeah yeah uh, and then there was, you know, the whole, the theater, like, let's, I had fun doing this in middle school and in high school. Why did I not try to pursue this in any way, shape or form? And so that's, and eventually communication and theater swapped. So mm. I had a theater major, comp minor, and then, mm. yeah, now we're like, that's when I met, I got to hang out with you. Mm -hmm. That's um, where we met. Yep. And yeah. And then, uh, the rest has just kind of been focused on like what kind of acting what kind of theater do i want to be a part of and uh, i've done a lot of uh voice acting some of it has been successful some not but even a little bit of success is uh awesome for me and yeah it's just been a really fun journey so far yeah yeah like you said we met in uh in that in that college sector um both doing theater i was a theater major as well i bounced around from business major to business theater major double major but what scared me away is i hate 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 calculus i hate it um and you can't do a business major without calc one and i didn't want to do that so I stopped that because I don't particularly love hard maths. Uh, and anyway, so I went on to the, the, the theater. That's where we met. And then after afterwards, I have not uh, personally done anything with that. I attempted for a little bit, but found that that, you know, I, I'm very pleased and appreciative of the things I learned because I enjoy creating stories and creating this you know cre just creating content in general uh and that really helped me do this it helped me create characters it helped me write stories it helped me find you know those the like through lines of things and it also just helped me learn about people like learning so much about these stories and about the like 
incredibly written ones is that they like capture the human experience especially when we're talking like theater specifically um these characters they capture what it is to be a person and so when you're reading them you're reading in the proper emotions you're reading in the things that like you would feel if you were going through this situation or that you would experience or whatnot and that gives it that full life just like that take on it has given me so much more in like creating uh stories slash characters that that kind of like world than i think i was expecting um but it didn't i don't know i i use it a lot now like in 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 this and in in like the 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 other podcasts the dungeons and drive-ins and dice and like just in creating content online in general i use a lot of that and i feel it coming up there was like a long time where i was a little nervous that like oh shit <laughs> maybe i wasted four years like i could take i could take a class on my own to learn how to write a story or something but I, i'm appreciative of that time i have landed on firmly uh, <laughs> Since then, like, what, what what are you up to now? Like, how how is that uh, sort of resting in your life now, theater or or and acting in general? One thing I'll say is that, like, w with regards to like, did it was it wasted? That kind of thing. I feel like you know, you, if you if you went into college with a theater major and came out with a theater major, as long as uh, you want it want it to mean something, then it will always mean something. It's sure. it's this wonderful like you know personal feeling of you know i understand people more or like how to portray people more and that kind of thing and it's all and like if it can fuel your imagination that's going to help you get through so many rough days when you know a business major might be able to help your wallet a bit more uh if you're you know a if you're not as lucky in the theater major but it won't like help you if you're walking degree. 500 miles <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, you get to you get this um, internal feeling of like, I don't know. There's this this joy that comes from watching good acting, performing, uh, getting to experience characters with different people. Even like 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 you said in your in your podcast uh, with Dungeons, Drive-ins. What what was and it? And dice, yeah. And dice. That was the third part. Uh, like. You get to, even if they didn't have a theater major, you get to see these people come together and be somebody else. It's really exciting to do. Mm -hmm. um, as long as people are, you know, just trying to enjoy it, then Four you can enjoy Four of the five it. of it's us great. have theater majors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a Dungeons & Dragons uh, campaign right now where mm -hmm. I'm the only person with theater Yeah, major, right, and right, they're, right. It's 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 so great watching people just come into this game with like an idea and then want to be this character the entire time. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but we're like what I'm doing besides uh, Dungeons and Dragons and other <laughs> other like you know fun things to take over my time um, whenever I have it uh, is uh, I currently started a job as a plasma center technician. So that's my little uh, safety net for when acting doesn't go well. So it's it's really it's really just a job that will allow me to go home and a uh have have some money that I can then feel good about like, you know, uh doing what I want to do mm -hmm. and then b it also makes me feel good that like I'm part of a process that has in my mind a deeper meaning yeah. like when it comes to you're you're helping with the donation of plasma which will hopefully if the system works which sometimes it doesn't but if it does then that goes to people who really need it and then lives get saved and that's really cool just getting to be like a tiny cog in that machine feels great uh but what i want to focus on doing and that what that allows me to focus on doing is voice acting which i've been doing uh seriously since 2018 um, I got incredibly lucky in my first year where um, a lot of people uh, listened to uh, what were horrible, horrible demos at the beginning and were like, no, yeah, him, we'll try it. Like, I've got, I've got decent 
audio equipment and stuff, but it was really just, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just like, let's get this together. People can listen to it. Uh, and then they can tell me that my voice is nice. And then I will, I will say whatever they want me to say. And then they will hopefully pay me. And I'll feel um, good about it. Cause they said my voice is nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, uh, I will say um, that like, so my two favorite episodes, just like sonically, at least while we're live and I can already would hope for the the the, the post production is that you and Leah's who's and uh, does voice acting as well. The audio is mm. so pleasing. You're <laughs> you're like so well balanced coming into it that all I had to do is turn up the volume a touch because I keep it down for other reasons. I just like click click click, perfect done. It's like mm. just pleasing because you got it all set up. So that's you said 2018. That was going. Um, you you were you were really successful in that first year. I I know that like some some of your like projects you're not allowed to talk about because they're either ongoing or haven't come out yet or or what or whatever be the reason. So if there's any of these that you know you can, feel free to leave those those out. No no pressure on anything like that. But like the ones that you can talk about, how like how was that for you in that first year? Are there any of those that you can like? What made you incredibly yeah. successful? <laughs> well, what made me incredibly successful was kind of just uh, just the fact that people even said yes. Uh, when it comes to like the measure of success in voice acting, um, is two things: one, getting the job, and and then completing it and getting paid for it, and you know people being happy with the work. That's all one thing. And then the second thing is not compromising your values which would be not undercutting other people trying to work, um, not just picking up any job that, you know, people will throw your way. Read the script like first. They, yeah, exactly. Like if, they, if they're going to make you sell something where you're just like, ah, I don't know about that, or like promote somebody or something that, you know, you don't quite, you know, vibe with, uh, then that's always an issue. And especially like if you really want to get that job, you don't want to, if, if the rates say, you know, this should cost about $400, you don't want to go in there like, oh, I'll do that for 350 especially for people who can pay that. Like if it's for indie work, you know, and it's a passion project and stuff like that, that's fine. You know, these are, these are people that like just really want to make something happen and they'll and then they're trying to pay you what they can afford to do. Right. Like, Very different like story. Yeah. With. Yeah. But like, for example, but like if you're, you're if not you're trying to undercut it, someone like, oh, I hear you're going to pay him 400, you could pay me 350 and I'll do the same work kind of situation. Right. 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 And then like, it, it, you know, you're not, uh, you also don't want to be uh, accepting jobs, any job that pays uh, just because it's paying. Because like if you've got Amazon, for example, uh, putting out a job that is going to be like a national thing and they're like 500 bucks, then it's like, no, don't. I, I, I understand 500 is a good amount of It'd money, especially for the work. It, that's it would be cool neat to, to be go like, on a that's reel, but that's like, that's like being, that's like them saying like, we're going to pay you, but like, think of all the exposure. It's like, but it isn't right. I need, <laughs> I could use the payment also. <laughs> like any percentage mm -hmm. from a national campaign would be fantastic over $500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah definitely so it, yeah it's, it's it's important to go through all that stuff um and you found success in doing that and sort of traversing those those waters um mm -hmm. i think it's you know a lot of people that, br that bring on their joys here there's a there's been a few that have you know it's it's involved with like career and like what they're they're doing as well um and you know you're you're falling into that it's, it's interesting finding a career in your in your in what brings you joy um. is voice acting your favorite part of acting is this like where you really want to do it or are you you know do you think that you just find success here and this is like it's it's acting and it does it for me do you like want to really be on stage is that part of the dream as well see now you're now you're really making me like look inward just with that one question of are you doing this because you're being successful at it and i'm like oh god i oh, like no, already no, no. like yeah no i i like but i think 
really that voice acting is where I want to be personally. Um, and I'll get into that, but like theater is fantastic. And so, are, so is, you know, acting for film, acting for, acting for anything live is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. It just, when it came to me and I found this out while we were in theater together, I never knew what to do with my hands. And I don't know, like people watching me on camera might know, Hey, look, dude kind of just moves them around willy nilly. I don't know what to do with these things. Um, that's part of the problem. So I, I feel like if there's one thing that I was always pretty good at, it was delivering the right emotion with the voice. I don't know if I was able to get the, uh, the face right all the time or anything like that, but I never had to worry about that with voice acting because it was just, you know, you get to listen to yourself and just really alter it and do it again and do it again and get it right. And then provide this clip of sound that then people get to listen to and be like, that guy's mad or that guy is this character being this emotion. And it's awesome. You know, a lot of, a lot of the success has actually been in voiceover, some of a little bit in voice acting, but, um, yeah, I think this is where I want to work. It's just, just really enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I started on like computer voice work. I even like started looking at like, uh, voiceover things voice acting roles and um, like audio books trying to get into using my voice that was before that like culminated in twitch but when I was doing it I like there's very few things that bring me like so much instant like Joy is the word I'm going to use because of the podcast, of course, but it's just like brain tingles, like when it works perfectly, when everything is clicking as like when you're recording something for audio and you're like, that wasn't right, but you have the script. So you just kind of like pause, keep going, pause, keep going, put a pause in here just in case I'll repeat it. And then I'll like finish the script out. And then you go back in and you're like, oh, the first half of this was perfect. And the second half of this was perfect. What should I do? I like whenever you can just like chop, chop, put together and like go in and dig a couple audio bites out to blend them. And then it just sounds fluid and like the sentence. And you're like, I didn't say that, but it's perfect. It's like I did say it is like mm -hmm. it gets the gears moving in my head. And I was just like, oh, that was so cool. I can't believe I did that. And it like got me really into like working with it. And that has like I said, culminated in here where like I, I still get that whenever I'm doing like the video and the audio like editing and post here when like everyone vocally pauses differently and how can I make things sound fluid without, you know, changing the way that they talk, but making it a little bit more less vocal posy and like it is so just like, like I said, like gives me the brain tingles whenever I I am able to cut it together and you're like, Ooh, that was perfect that went together mm. so well and i'm so excited to hear what that sounds like in post and then it, it always sounds like you know incredible and i uh yeah 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 i can definitely at least relate to 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 that little little bit i i love that i love that so much um, what have been so like any of the ones that you're allowed to talk about what about what have been some of your like favorite projects to be able to work on some of my favorite well some of some of my favorite have actually been like the non-paying ones okay sure uh just be just because like I, I really do enjoy passion projects um but for example there's one that i actually got to like keep a copy of which was uh there was I don't know if they were a college student or grad school student or something like that, but they were working on this, uh, uh, I guess this possibility of a product basically. And they wanted to have, to have somebody's voice in order to, uh, describe the product and like what the benefit of it was, et cetera. Yeah. And it was this really cool, uh, concept. Obviously I don't, know enough about the subject and you know i don't know if it would be like how feasible it would be or anything like that but it was called spectrum specs and it was this idea of spectrum releasing a line of uh 
of uh, glasses for um, the people on the autism spectrum. Okay. That would, um, based on the emotions of people that you're talking to, would like light up in different colors, like register how people are feeling that they're talking to, since people, like, in, in court, according to this script, people uh, on the autism spectrum have a little bit of a tougher time registering like what the person they're talking to is feeling or like how or how their tone of voice would suggest that like is this person happy sad angry etc yeah um, but the glasses so sort just, of give you a little bit of a of a like a light indicator a visual indicator mm -hmm. of like the intention sort of like emotional intention of this person right and so it it was just this it was like a minute long and it's on youtube uh and it's I, I don't know i thought it was like a really cool idea and the person that i worked with was really happy with how it turned out and it just you know i i like regardless of whether or not you know this was actually possible or if you know this was based on just specific accurate science it was the idea of wanting to be able to help people with a product uh and then pitching it with a voice that uh was also enthusiastic about it because i was I, I thought it was a really cool idea and so getting to see both of those come together this idea with like a little bit of stock footage and then uh you know the performance and then being happy w about it was just it was like yeah that makes me feel great and it was it was things like that it was it was things where you know, I got to work on people's passion projects. And then also, you know, people were like, well, can you do this character? And I was like, yeah, I'll do this character for your little like, uh, web show, that kind of thing. It, it like doesn't pay, but it's, it's just fun. I need to, to be fill my time too. Yeah. 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 And then like, I got to, like, I've also gotten to work for companies that, uh, I respect like safe light. Uh, that was one thing that I got to do where it was just, I didn't get to say safe light repair, safe light, safe light rep <laughs> replaced. That's what I was I thinking in my head. I was it, like, so I'm glad. It's like, is that, is that that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was a smaller thing, but you know, it was, it was, I think it was an internet ad play and I don't, and I didn't, didn't get to like keep a physical copy of that, of the finished project. But you know, it was just really cool to work with like a brand that a isn't problematic. Um, and Hard B now. Yeah, hard now. And then, and B is, w will respect your time and and the budget, etc. And people know about it. It's great. So you get so to like be a like, very professional, I work for uh, running of like uh, this. Is that is that maybe is that like along the lines of like the more like the most. Um... I don't know. I, I I I would I would stray away from using the word professional, but like uh, maybe like high end or like high budget, maybe productions that you've been a part of. Well, so when it comes to high end, high budget, and then professional, uh, there were there are three different examples of that. Oh, With high budget, great. there was this big project that I worked on in 2018, uh, where I basically uh, sat in my basement for hours on end for a month and recorded basically speech synthesis ai and this was back I before i remember hearing about like like little tidbits that yeah. you could release while you were doing it mm -hmm. uh and that was a lot of fun very high budget uh i've never done anything like that again and honestly i probably wouldn't with the whole uh voice actors are like ai is coming for the art you know I like mean, AI now, you know, that, that to... company has, has a voice actor on, you know, on, on hand anytime they need it now. Right. Well, luckily for, I, okay, well. I I'll... just mean because of your AI recordings. Yeah. Well, luckily for me specifically, uh, there won't be any more of that. Unfortunately, that's because the company that worked with me no longer produces AI mm. speech synthesis. And so like that whole thing didn't work out. That sort of branch but, of theirs went down. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about my voice being used as long as I don't do that ever, ever again. Yeah. But I, and, and I, and I hope that they are able to like 
work on more of their passions and you know continue to do what they love but uh you know I, you don't have to worry about brian being out there and you know saying whatever people want me to say right like it's it's not you're not siri that. right yeah exactly um and that poor girl and then <laughs> uh and then there's um when it comes to Sa safe light i think was the most uh it was it was the most uh one of the more professional feeling ones because I, we worked with them through source connect which was really cool it was my first time getting to do that um what is source and connect? it just just more source connect me, is me questioning yeah it's it's like it's uh it's a program that allows you to basically connect a studio from a great distance away with your home studio where like you can do it over the phone, but it wouldn't be like the perfect quality. It would, it's basically allows, I believe if I'm not talking out of my butt here, uh, it allows a studio somewhere else in this, in the United States to listen to what I'm saying specifically through my microphone setup, through my audio setup. Like if I'm in my booth, all that quality gets transferred straight to them live uh, to their live feed and they can like live tamper it with it in their own studio settings, that kind of thing. It gives them your audio feed. Mm -hmm. It would be like trying to like do the recording over uh, Skype or a phone patch or something like that, except way more high end and way more accurate. Right. And then they could also treat it uh, with their studio either live or immediately after me saying it, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. they, there would be like no delay in terms of them being able to just have the uh sound bite to really to work with really neat yeah uh i had um, never heard of that but oh. i like was more and more I I interested as you kept talking about it yeah I'm, I'm hoping that i'm not like totally uh miss selling this because i mean like it's it's a thing that a lot of uh mm. especially more successful voice actors have have worked with um but i've only got from the your experience that's one. this is what it seemed like yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. And then, and then the last big professional thing was, and it wasn't even it. It was for uh, I don't even remember the specifics on what it was for, but I got to go into an actual recording studio. Yeah, and I got to sit. I got to sit in the room, the padded room with all the acoustic foam everywhere, with the mic in front of me, with the script on like a, on a tray. Mm -hmm. And then I, if I looked over to my right through the like windows and, and the whole window and stuff there's them sitting there with all these big computers and fucking you know, leveling your voice i love exactly. it exactly yeah 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 and then like if they wanted to if they wanted me to go again i would hear it over the intercom because they press a button to talk to me it was it was basically everything that you you see in terms of the voice acting if you watched anybody doing it live and you know people talking to each other about like oh that was good go again that kind of thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's I got to experience that, even if it was like a smaller end project, something that I don't even remember, like what specifically it was for. I just remember being sitting the there booth. and being like, "I'm doing it." Yeah, that's amazing. Great. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, has there been on the on this sort of topic? Has there been anything that has like either like, well, one, has there been anything that has challenged you, but you've been like excited to rise the occasion? And two, is there been any any kind of project where you've been like on it and then realized like even part of the way through like I'm not for this, this isn't for me, and had to like professionally pull out? I don't know if I don't know I don't know how that works in 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 this world. So I was just curious. Yeah. Um. Well, with with regards to professionally pulling out, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of shady groups out there that'll like you know they'll want you to do something and then they don't won't really specify the pay and then they'll be like that was good can you say this again and it'll be like they're kind of dodging that element and you're like uh for like even even for companies that you've worked with before um there's always this audition process mm -hmm. and you've got to be very careful to like you know you're not you're not necessarily going to slate your name for everything but you kind of want to have either a watermark uh in your audition or you want to have like ch change the name of something like leave out their product if they're selling something for example 
because you don't want people to like when you audition they can just take depending it. on the sites take it yeah and just be like yeah or they'll be like this was great we want to go with you uh send us a recording and then they're like working outside of the site you know and then it's right. like well you got to be careful there because like now if they're working outside of the site the site typically has people there to facilitate between the two of you whereas with this it's like the benefit of working outside the site is that the site then is just like they might not record that you did the work uh or anything but at the very least they're also not taking a chunk out of the budget mm. which is why some people want to do it outside of the site but the balancing act then yeah but then there's the issue of like do you trust these people enough to basically give them your time and effort and then get nothing back because they're like now nah, we have it we don't have to do anything you know like uh, you really have to either get into it legally yourself with like contracts and signing forms and all that stuff or really acknowledge that you could get cheated here or be like can we go back to the site i would rather take a small pay cut as long as i'm getting paid and right you know, i, I yeah, prefer to get paid this. a little bit less than to get not paid at all mm -hmm. and then um something that something that was challenging well i've never I haven't, I, I think <laughs> part of the thing there is that a lot of the challenging things are in the audition. I think when I get uh, picked for something, there's never really been something that's happened where I've been like, I can't do this. Because I feel like the actual getting, the actual acceptance is what gives you that kind of confidence boost. Like, they picked me. They want me I'm to the, do this. I, I'm the one for I this. Can. I got this. Yeah. Exactly. They sure. who knows how many dozens or even hundreds of people they listen to. They pick me uh, for whatever reason, and that's good enough for me. I can sure. do what they need me to do. the The most challenging things, really, is like uh, it, it comes from the audition and knowing the parameters and like what character you're trying to be and uh, things like that. So the the challenges can either stem from them wanting a specific character and you really needing to like find a way to become that mm -hmm. or or even even more challenging sometimes is them just being like here's here's a here's a character here's what they look like they're somewhere between like 17 and 21 mm -hmm. years old and and they and here's their job here's what they do and here's your script and it's like two lines it's two li it's like one one thing is like the the guy saying like um, oh, oh I'll have that back, please. And then it doesn't even tell you like what your emotion is that you're feeling, and you're like, "What? Oh, I don't. You're giving me too much freedom here. Do I don't I know let what them to do. know I work in a grocery store with I'll have that back, please." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's it, it's it can be fun. It can be really fun to just you know be like, "Oh, well, I can do this in whatever tone I want." If they're not going to specify, you know, like who knows what they're looking for? I could do anything here. Mm -hmm. But then there's the like the paralyzing fear that comes with that of oh i don't know what they want right so it's it's like what is the best take here like how how do i make this sound the best for them because you're trying to you're trying to show them what you can do while also finding the thing that they want and you know sometimes it just doesn't work out even if you've got like a really great idea and you do a, a really good job it's not what they want yeah it's always the issue So what in, um, are, do you have any, like, I don't know, ideal roles or goals with, like, what you're, with, with what you're doing? Or, like, you know, maybe even just, like, you know, a big, big dream with all of this? Well, the big, big dream would definitely be getting to voice a character in basically anything animated. Uh, whether that means dubbing a character in like an anime or getting to be on some show on like Disney XD or Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or even, you know, something like uh, Smiling Friends that's like on Adult Swim. Like it, c it can be anything, anywhere, basically, as long as it's something that people really put like time, effort and emotion into. And I got to be a part of that. 
and they told me what this character is, and then I got to, you know, become the character Play and a then character deliver over a like a long period of with. time. To, yeah, like grow and then with people that can character. be like, right, and people can be like that character. That's a that's a cool character, bad character. I hate that character. I hate and that I character. Be like that's me. I got to be that person for a bit. I'm like I'm like. I'm not I'm not that character specifically because I'm right here. I'm Brian. Hi. But hi. <laughs> I, I yeah, but I got to for a time I was basically that character, you know. Right. I would love to be in a cartoon one day, a children's cartoon. I like I have been always inspired by Adventure Time since it came out in 2010 and I think ish 2010ish. And I hmm like watching the the kid that voiced finn grow up over the course of that series with me like when i started watching it yes i was in high school uh and i wasn't like watching it because i wasn't like watching a bunch of tv in high school i was out doing dumb shit and getting into trouble but like in college you know i got to like go back and re-experience that as like okay how how has this kid grown in in this period of time and like by the end of the season like or the series the 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 actor himself is so much older than when he started mm -hmm. and he i would love to like question him on like what parts of his like growth have been integral to like this character growing you know did he go through any of the stuff like you know, when Finn is, like, going through girlfriend troubles and growing up as a human, how is that helping or hindering maybe him as a as a young kid at the time? Uh, it's just, like, fascinating. And, yeah, a long-form a long -form series thing just to, like... I, I'm so interested in, like, how I would grow also mm -hmm. along with this thing and, like, being able to do it for so long and be, like, I... And also just being able to say, like, I am Finn. You know, you know, mm -hmm. Finn from Adventure Time, that's me. Like, that would be cool mm -hmm. to say in, like, whatever that would be in the future, whatever that, that like, cartoon is down the line. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that you would prefer anime or, or like, cartoons? Because this kind of started with maybe, like, a love of cartoons, but I know that, like, now you have, like, a, a like, a, a big love for anime. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so... I think that's what makes it so difficult is like what you said about you, you you would be able to say I'm Finn or whatever that is down the road. Yeah. And I'm like, exactly down the road. Like, I don't know what opportunities are going to show up. Like with anime, sometimes you, you can kind of tell depending on the success of like, Oh, there's a manga or a light novel or something, you know, happening or a non uh, and it's getting popular. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, Oh, you could be like, if, if it gets, in anime then you could audition to be in this role and it's like i don't it, it's hard to hard to tell like in terms of you know sh an, any animated show what this next character would be that it's like oh i want to be that you sure. know um but i i think it's it's really hard to it's really hard to say i think because anime is such a big part of my life that anime kind of beats out uh just like you know being a, uh, a cartoon character or you know any animated character but at the same time there's something really really fun about getting to be the the focus of animators because you know when you when you watch an anime dubbed you like they're trying their best but it's not it wasn't made for them no, you know I mean? that's, that's like, it, true, it was... yeah. So, like, dubbing is really fun and really fun to watch when it's done well with, like, great translating stuff that makes sense when, you know, uh, broadcast to uh, a slightly different culture. Um, and then having people, like, understand what the character is, who the character is, and, like, being that able feels to deliver like the that big same one emotion. To me. I recognize that some of the translation goes askew and that we don't understand a lot of their, like, honorific scale. And that's, like, a huge part of their speech that we just do not grasp as, a, as an audience. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's fine. Leaving that aside, I can leave the, like, coons and chans and, and all that aside. But, like... It feels like a lot of the dub actors for me just don't understand the character or haven't 
consumed this anime maybe or the manga or like any of it to understand like what they're supposed to be feeling and so like a lot of our like dubbed like personally i watch dubbed only because i like am doing other things i'm like multitasking and so i like to hear it and even though i recognize that like it would sound better if i had some good intention behind what they're saying that like i can uh, i get used to it eventually and now that just just is the character uh and that's fine but like it still never sounds as good and that a lot of that comes down to just like the intention in the voice actor they like have this role in a script but they don't necessarily they haven't like consumed the character that they are like getting into mm -hmm. whereas like with a it's... cartoon i feel like they're it's kind of they kind of like write it out and then you just like have this character rather than like you're not trying to be uh for instance like ichigo in the upcoming bleach you're just you know being finn that that no one has, has been before you know mm -hmm. i guess that i guess that that's like the cartoons but like it's, it's for the western audience anyway uh in a lot mm -hmm. of the the examples i'm giving the dubs are just it's it's like 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 we've said it's like it's really hard to get it right and there could be a lot of different factors that made it that way where it's like you could have the perfect uh voice the voice actor for that character and then sit them down with uh a staff that didn't understand the character as well as you and was like okay that's good we want it a different way like this and then it's just you know like they did it right the first time mm -hmm. and then they're told to do it again that's and then somebody else is like i want this or even just i don't know there's so many different places where things could go quote unquote wrong um but it's it's still so great to like a be able to bring anime to like a more global audience to to really enjoy the shows if like for example you you just can't sit down with uh, a subbed show or something like that then you know you get to listen to um different people with their performances their takes on it that kind of thing and you know quality quality aside it's uh really cool to have this market for like people getting to be these really cool characters whether they're like being simulcast or it's uh, an older show and it's finally getting a dub to yeah. it it's like I love this person. Now I get to be this person. It's awesome. Are there any like overall lessons I think that you have picked up in doing this that I don't know, help you maybe even outside of it in, in voice acting or, uh, and, uh, and also to maybe people who are interested, like what is, afterwards maybe some advice or or tips in like getting started in this um i find like mm -hmm. i i might know a lot of people that, that would be interested but i just have no idea where to start mm -hmm. well uh a lot of a lot of what i've learned from voice acting is that for example you uh could do everything right you know you could have all the best equipment right you could nail the audition uh, and just, you know, and, and turn it in under all of the parameters that they set. Like, it has to be MP3, it has to be, you know, such and such kilohertz, that kind of thing. Um, and then you feel really good about it, and then never hear back, and then see that it got cast to somebody else, or something like that, you right. know? Uh, it's, it's, it's this constant game of just um, auditioning is the job, send it out, take pride in your work for a bit, and then you have to move to the next thing. Yeah. Otherwise, like you're not going to get work. But it's it's like that is that can be life sometimes. It's it's this idea of, you know, you could do everything right and things might still not work out for you. But the fact of the matter is that as long as you continue to do everything right, it will eventually happen. Like that's just how it works. You just have to have the intention behind it. And that and that kind of goes into the the notes for anybody who would want to get a start in it and it's something that took me a long time to realize you know even from middle school age you're not you're not a great actor yet right just because you got a part you know just because you've had some success right the best 
actors out there aren't going home and being like, "Ah, oh, I'm great. Time to go to bed." They're like, "That was a that was a fun shoot." Like, uh, whether they were on set for a film or whether they, you know, were in a booth all day, and then they come home and they're reading a book about how to be a better actor. They are, um, you know, doing vocal cool downs to like keep everything in shape. Um, they're really running through their head what they did, what they did well, what they could work on, etc. Uh, and they're t- and then like the next day, you know, before their shoot or whatever, they're taking a class with another great actor or voice actor or whatever. They're learning from other people and they're constantly trying to improve themselves so that when they eventually do, if they're in the middle of working on something big, have to transition back into the grind of, you know, sending out audition after audition, they are more and more and more likely to succeed because they're continuing to do everything right. And then with every audition, they're doing it even more right, which, you know, you might not think it's possible until it is, until you're doing it actively. It's, it's this really cool, like, fact of the matter that you are not a great actor yet until you've, like, got, gotten into this routine of trying to be one. So as long as you're constantly trying to be a good actor, you eventually do become one and you stay one. Um, regardless of what anyone says, crit- critique-wise, it's it's that effort. That's true. That's true. I think that, like, as with a lot of joys, you have to be prepared to put in work to continue to find joy in it. I find that, like, on all of these, the more work you put in, the more, like, well-versed you are in the subject of what it is, the more you engross yourself in it, the more joy you're able to like pull from it and the more that you're able to improve in it. Um, practice, be prepared for failure. That seems like a big portion of it. Like not necessarily, not necessarily, see like, I don't know if there's another word that could be put in that. Cause I wouldn't necessarily say that that like is a failure. There is like in a lot of these themes of like acting theater i don't know any of these roles there is it's either first place or you have lost in general Mm -hmm. right and like based on that like you know not getting first place is not necessarily a failure hopefully that you you know you're able to draw some lessons from this situation even if you're not hit up like in the end even if you don't get an email saying like we didn't choose you for x y and z reason you hopefully can still draw some lesson from this like it you know i picked up maybe some speed in my editing i had to do less takes in order to get this edit this time whatever that be you got experience you got practice and that is not a failure improving at the craft is never a failure Mm -hmm. failure is allowing a rejection to stop you completely it like the audition itself even if it's not picked, like if you did a really good job with it, you sent it to that person. They listened to it. There's a chance that that sticks in their head. They might even just write your name down of like, I might contact them later. It it can happen. Mm -hmm. And it has, um, there's people that are like, can I put you in, uh, the database of voice acting? Like people like, can I keep your demo so that I can, you know, if I, if a project comes up, I can listen to it again and be like, would they be good for this? I could contact them. Um, and there's, you know, it's, it's like, there's joy in quote unquote failing the audition too, because it's just the, the joy comes from getting to do it. It's like, it's that opportunity to, for example, if you're auditioning for a really fun character, you're like, wow, this person puts so much effort and love into this character. You can tell just from like the way they're describing it. You know, if they put effort mm-hmm. in the description of like who they are and what they want to do and stuff like that. And then you sit down and you're like, I want to be this character. And then you start pretending to be that character. You know, you get in, engrossed in that character for a bit and you're like, that was fun. You got to be like somebody else that somebody really loves as an idea for like a brief period of time. And then even if you don't get to do them ever again, you still got to enjoy that for what it was 
So it's it's yeah. really just looking at it and being like, uh, if you can make even like the disappointment of not getting to be that character fun, then it's never going to stop you. you can yeah, just I think that's working. a fantastic point. In in you know not I I don't think this would necessarily go for all joys, but with a lot of, with some joys, there is like a sense of winning or losing or succeeding or failing and i really like what you said that it isn't necessarily about failing in this it's and you know by by transit property it's not not about succeeding either it's just about being able to do it it's just in a world that is run by success and failure but you can find joy outside of that like structure of the of that like uh subject like yes in the end there is a acceptance or denial of whatever i've done but that isn't necessarily what's important to me while it's helpful to my bills or or whatnot of course it is you know that i got to do this thing and that is that's a that's a very joyous uh way to put it Is there anything on this subject of acting or, or voice acting that we may not have covered that that you you know you thought about in in leading up to this, or have been thinking about while we've been talking? There's a bit going on with uh, <clears throat> with like Crunchyroll and Mob Psycho right now, which is like Mob Psycho is a fun anime that's getting into its third season. It's mm -hmm. a it's a long form show, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Crunchyroll, which started that as this darling site that, you know, even got its start kind of like in the um, the the Kiss anime era of like kind of pirated anime, just bringing it over so that people in America could watch it. They've started getting a bit big and they uh, they denied an opportunity to sit down with SAG-AFTRA, the big union for for acting work. Um and have even gone as far as like they're going to recast roles in Mob Psycho for the third season because because the main character's voice wanted to sit down with Crunchyroll and SAG uh, union members to like negotiate further contracts. And they said um, no. Uh, bye. They said no. They said no to even sitting down to talk about it Holy like it wasn't shit. even an issue yeah it wasn't even an issue of like what we do in this meeting will be set in stone about like payment it's more just like can we talk about like Rights. you know set right, yeah exactly and and now they they just said no to even talking about it uh they've basically cut communication with this person and are looking to recast and then there's also um info info coming out about like the one of the more recent anime films Jujutsu Kaisen 0 which got a United States release the dub actors got paid for a multi-million film uh $300 flat like no residuals or anything like that some of the minor characters got 150 for their work for like a big film that got United States theater releases. Like these are these are these are voices. These are voice actors that like even even though I don't watch as many dubs and I should, but even though I don't watch as many dubs, I know these names. Right. Like, these are these are names that have come up because they're good at what they do and they get cast in things. Like and you meet them at cons, that kind of thing. And they right? got James. And they're and they're just like we've made like. Uh, and like one hundred and fifty dollars isn't a small amount of money, like just in general. But if but we're for, talking comparatively, uh, yeah, like that is an important note to make. No, if I got paid one hundred and fifty dollars, it is all about the work that you're putting in and the money. In the end, actually, not the work you're putting in, the money that they are making it off of you as a person. You should absolutely get a percentage of all of it, all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, so I guess the main takeaway here is that uh, pay attention to what's happening in whatever industry you're in, in terms of like what's what's healthy, right? Because you want to stay happy, uh, but you don't want to be part of or uh, like 
helping along something that shouldn't be happening. Like, so for example, if uh, you start seeing stuff like, hey, you could open audition to be the new voice of Shigeo Kageyama, the main character of Mob Psycho yeah. 100 for the third season. It's like you're you're taking somebody else's job, basically. Someone they're, else did have that job. We need to find out job. why. Yeah. And and like I know this sounds like a dream true, but is it really worth it if you get that character and then they get to continue to uh, like it might be great for you the pay they give you but like they can just realize like we never have to sit down with SAG because there are people out there who would be willing to do this work without ever negotiating it through union contracts or anything like that man when and, you started that I was expecting I honestly you were you when you had started you're like there's this new season of Mob Psycho coming out blah 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 and I was like and you're like and the the you know you you had mentioned that like the started to mention that the third season and like they're going to be looking for new actors and before you started explaining i was like oh is this man about to tell me he's gonna he's gonna audition for mob psycho and then you were got to the end of that and i was like why would he tell me that he's about to audition for mob psycho and then you weren't no. like that wasn't yeah. the moral of the story and i was like good good yeah, <laughs> good yeah, outcome yeah. I, like i would love i would love to audition for new characters being introduced in mob psycho 100 yes. season three as long as Crunchyroll is willing to sit down you know, with Sag. Pull their, right, pull their head out of the sand and put that head in a room with people negotiating contracts for people who have, like, you've hired to do a really good job for a really popular show that is making you a good amount of money, I'm assuming. Is Crunchyroll especially based on, a business based in America? Yes. Yes. And they're, it's them and Funimation, and they've both been bought and brought together under Sony. So basically, they're part of like what is quickly becoming a monopoly on anime in, in terms of like the English dub and serial, serialization of it. Yeah. So the assumption is that they have money, especially enough money to pay actors in multi-million dollar They got Sony movies. Uh, movies. They, they yeah, got exactly. Sony money. They've got enough to pay more than three hundred dollars for a film dub. So be aware. Is, is what it is. Yeah, be be aware of, of, of what's happening. Don't contribute to the problem uh, if you can help it. I understand there will there are going to be people that like you know you really really need this opportunity. Uh, just be just be aware of like what is being sacrificed uh, in order to attain this. And and be aware of like, is it really worth it? That kind of thing, because part of the part of the thing about you know pure joy uh, with voice acting is the enjoyment of the process, which we've already touched on. If if the process involves you like destroying or helping to destroy others' livelihoods, when you reach that end goal and you turn and you look back at where you've been you might not find as much joy as you thought you did you were going to so there it's it's joy in all parts of it even even the parts that aren't quite like you know even the parts that aren't quite as happy yeah there's still joy there so yeah when you just, look back and said that you did it right right i did it with like my you know, my my idea of what's right intact along the way. That's nice. That's very thought provoking. I think uh, a very strong way to uh, call this to a close. I think um, it has been a lovely conversation. Absolutely lovely having you on for the 10th episode. Very exciting. I feel like it's a a special one uh you know just because it's it's our first it's our entrance into the double digits uh mm -hmm. very exciting glad i could be here for it yeah 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 it was a it was a lovely conversation uh we're gonna draw some some stuff to a close but um i'm i'm sure that we we will talk soon yeah absolutely yeah it was good talking good talking to you i want to appreciate all of you being here on this the 10th episode of the pure joy podcast my guest tonight was my friend brian barons uh we've known each other like we talked about there for a number of years now coming up on almost 10 maybe like eight 
seven years now, something like that. It was really interesting getting to learn about that through his eyes. Everyone always brings on just like a story or uh, an approach or 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 an idea of something that I just like am blown away by. And when he's talking about walking through 500 miles of Spain and talking about how this is part of like what is keeping him going through this time is like absolutely like secondhand breathtaking. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. I think that it was, I don't know, inspiring, a little joyous conversation, no matter what. This was a lovely episode, uh, a great time as always. Let's start talking about some dates, folks, and some thanks. Our next live episode will be on October 9th, and then that will be released October 16th. A couple thanks here. One to Myonize and Murda for allowing me to use their music in the intro, the outro, and the transitions here and there. I'm very appreciative of them. You can find their music on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, wherever you find your music. Uh, I'd also like to thank my partner for just being amazing and uh, supporting me in, in all that we do together. And I think with that, folks, we're going to draw this episode to a close. But I want to appreciate, again, all of you joining here on the 10th episode of the Pure Joy podcast. And we'll see you next time.